Right, I'm Marion and today we're going to be looking at the zero chart of accounts. If you're a sole trader and you're using the standard zero chart of accounts, I want you to stop what you're doing right now because I'm going to show you how to improve it. And by improving it, we will cut down in the time for data entry and reduce the likelihood of making mistakes. So let's go do it. Okay, from the dashboard, we're going to go to the chart of accounts. So settings and chart of accounts. And first of all, as a sole trader, there's accounts that we want to delete if we've used the zero chart of accounts. There's accounts that relate to corporation tax. And I'm going to use the search box to find them. Corporation tax is not relevant for a sole trader, so we will select them and then you would choose delete. I don't actually want to delete them. I need these accounts for later, so I'm going to choose the option archive, but you would choose delete. Okay, so corporation tax is gone. There's also an account for deferred tax, again, not relevant for a sole trader, so we can delete it. And then there are accounts that relate to directors. So directors remuneration, directors loan account, again, you would choose delete, I will archive. Archive an account just means you can bring it back at a later date. And we also have an account for share capital. So if we search for that, code 950, select it, and again, delete. Right, we're going to look at two more. There's, if we choose entertainment, we will see that there's two codes now. There's no reason to have two, so we're going to delete one of them. So we'll select the second one. You can select either, and we would delete that. Similar, there are two codes for travel, if I can spell. Search key just, search box just makes it easier to find travel, national and international. Again, no need for two of them, so we're going to remove one. Right, so that's the accounts we don't need. There's also accounts that we don't like how they're worded, so we're going to amend them, and we do that by using the edit option. We're going to go back to this entertainment code and we click on it on the blue to select it and that takes us into the option to edit. Now all that I'm going to do is remove this word in that says 100% business. That doesn't really make sense in the UK. Entertainment is entertainment. It's not going to be fully deductible if it's clients that you're entertaining. Change the word in just to say entertainment you're not going to be able to claim back VAT on it. So if you're a VAT registered business, you would change that to say zero rated expenses and we would save. We're going to go back to the travel code. Again, click on it, travel national. And I would suggest that we change that to just say travel and subsistence, or you can say travel and hotels, whatever makes sense for your business. And then we've got codes that are for fixed assets. So we've got 700 codes. So we've got a code for office equipment. Now I find that people use that by mistake. They might buy a stapler and code it to office equipment. This is not the correct code. This is for equipment that will have a life lasting more than a year. The values tend to be higher. So I tend to put a suggestion in there that we maybe only code items that are greater than 200 pounds. That's optional, but at least if you put that there, it means that somebody's not going to code your stapler to the wrong place and we can save it. So what else have we got in our fixed assets section? There's a code for plant and machinery. And again, we can just put a suggestion and this is just to help 
whoever's coding items to make sure they don't go to the wrong place. What else have we got as assets? Well, we can actually click on the asset and we can look for fixed assets. So office equipment we have amended. Computer equipment, we can amend that as well. So again, we're going to put greater than 200 pounds. In other words, if you go and buy a new mouse and it costs you 10, 15 pounds, we don't want it to be coded here. Amend it and save. So another quick look down the assets, buildings, self-explanatory, leasehold motor vehicles. That's fine. Okay, there's also codes in zero relating to the owner of the business. And I went to the search box and why did that not work? It didn't work because I'm on the asset code section. So we'll go back to all accounts and we'll type in owner again. And this time, so we've got owner A funds introduced and owner A drawings. And all that I suggest that you do here is instead of owner A, you change it to your name. Funds introduced and save. Again, there's a drawings code. Now clearly it is your name you want to input, not the words your name, but I'm sure you get the gist of it. Your name and drawings. If there's more than one owner, if it, you're a partnership, not sole trader, then you can have two accounts for funds introduced and two accounts for drawings. But that's it. That's your chart of account. It's tidied up, which means that you'll be quicker with your data entry and you'll be less likely to make mistakes. I challenge you to go off right now, have a look at your chart of accounts and tidy it for your sole trader business. We will see you soon in the next video.